conflicts in Israel and Ukraine are becoming connected in many ways, and their main link is Russia, or more precisely, Russia's failed invasion of Ukraine. After a lot of unverified information, a clear evidence for direct Russian participation in the Hamas operation in Israel has finally appeared. This video shows Russian-speaking instructors within the Hamas terrorist organization, which gave orders and coordinated the actions of mercenaries during the attack on Israel on October 7th, 2023. The order in Russian, Prikrivate, Prikrivate, cover, cover, can be clearly heard from 12 seconds onwards. by the United States and the European Union. The meeting, according to the Russian Foreign Ministry, touched on Russia's unchanged position in support of a just solution to the Palestinian problem. When considering the issue of restoring Palestinian national unity, the Russian side expressed its readiness to continue to assist in overcoming differences and bringing together the positions of leading Palestinian political forces and movements on the platform of the Palestine Liberation Organization. The ministry's readout said, Russia's ties to Hamas are well documented, as are its ties to Hamas's main backer, Iran. For some observers and commentators of the ongoing bloodshed in Israel, that in itself is cause for blaming Moscow, accusing it of having a direct hand in the spiraling violence. Russia's embrace of Iran has benefited Moscow in its war on Ukraine, with Tehran supplying kamikaze drones and other equipment to help Russian forces seeking to hold back a slow-moving Ukrainian counteroffensive. Russia is also set to benefit from the Israel-Hamas conflict, as Israel's requests for U.S. military aid risk diverting weapons and focus from Ukraine, while the rising price of oil bolsters Moscow's economy. U.S. and NATO allies have rebuffed concerns about their ability to continue supporting Ukraine militarily in the aftermath of Gaza-based militant group Hamas's attack on Israel, which already receives billions in aid from Washington every year. Yet there is a clear understanding in the Kremlin that the war between Israel and Hamas will work in Russia's favor, according to two people with knowledge of the situation, who asked not to be identified because of the sensitivity of the issue. The conflict may, at the very least, work to distract U.S. and European attention from the war in Ukraine, the people said, even while Russia has concerns about its escalation. And while we are at Israel, the Israeli army published footage showing troops of the Navy's elite Shayatet 13 Commando Unit retaking the Sufa military post on the Gaza border from Hamas terrorists on Saturday. This? defining battle of the war is underway. 
The video shows yet another attempt to move a large armored column of Russians from Krasnohorivka to cover the northern flank of the Avdivka front. Approximately 20 units of equipment, tanks, infantry fighting vehicles, armored transport. Part of this column was destroyed, but the scale of the offensive is epic. Avdivka is of strategic importance to Russia, as this city is actually the gateway to Donetsk, the main communication hub in the occupied territories. In order to establish a foothold in the occupied Donbas, Putin needs to move the front line away from Donetsk. In 2022, Russian troops launched an offensive against Avdivka, trying to deeply encircle the city from both flanks. It was stopped due to heroic resistance of Ukrainians. The battle for Avdivka will be more fierce than the battle for Vuladar in winter. The presence of shielded buildings in Donetsk and Yasinovana facilitates covert actions, deployment of artillery in residential areas, and hidden operations of armored vehicles. Russia has concentrated significant aviation forces that use high-precision weapons, a large number of shells that could be supplied by North Korea and Iran. Russians are trying to create a great advantage in drones. Russian drones, along with artillery, are being used to hit the front lines, and the enemy is trying to open the way for their infantry and tanks to break through the combat formations of our troops, primarily using a large number of high-explosive munitions. The main attack is coming from the south of Avdivka. Unlike the first offensive on Avdivka, which lasted from July 2022 to March 2023, the current attack is planned to cover the city in a much shorter arc. However, the enemy is trying to avoid fighting in the urban areas and create a threat of encirclement for our troops in the city. The situation is very serious. A very heavy battle has begun. But Russians have huge losses in Avdivka. During the day, Ukrainian special operation forces destroyed eight units of heavy equipment and dozens of invaders. Five tanks, one BMP, one APC, one armored vehicle, Tiger, dozens of units of the enemy's manpower. Russian offensive operations too. Russians attacks at Kopani and Robotine are driven back with heavy losses. The Ukrainian general staff reports that Russian losses in the last 24 hours include 990 casualties, 42 main battle tanks, 44 infantry fighting vehicles, and 32 artillery systems. And I want to point out again that unlike the war in Ukraine, in the Israeli Arab War, we are not taking sides. We feel that this conflict has so much history in it, and based on the acts from both sides, it's not easy to condemn or defend either. So we are only reporting about the events with our analysis of the situation. At the end, we have a statement from former Israeli soldier, which is same with the our analysis. It's very hard to imagine how did Hamas foot soldiers, without any armor and artillery, manage to capture Israeli army bases and towns. I served in the IDF 25 years ago in the intelligence forces. There's no way in my view that Israel did not know what's coming. Something is very wrong here. A year ago, there was a military operation in Gaza to prepare for such events. And ongoingly, there are trainings for these kind of scenarios. This raises serious questions for me anyway about Israeli intelligence. What happened? Two years ago, there were uh, there was a successful deployment of underground barriers with sensors to alert exactly on these kind of terrorist breaches. Israel has one of the most advanced and high-tech armies. How come there was zero response to the border and fence breaching? I cannot understand that. Personally, I served in the IDF 25 years ago in the intelligence forces. There's no way, in my view, that Israel did not know of what's coming. 
a cat moving alongside the fence is triggering all forces. So this? What happened to the strongest army in the world? How come border crossings were wide open? Something is very wrong here. Something is very strange. This chain of events is very unusual and not typical for the Israeli defense system. With the recent normalization efforts of Israel and Palestine led by Saudi Arabia, I wonder whether a prisoner's exchange deal is something that could only be seriously considered by Israel if a shocking event like that happened. Is it a possibility that only with Israel hostages it can be justified to release dangerous prisoners from Israeli prisons? I don't know. Mainstream media reported that Deputy Hamas leader Salah al arouwi suggests using Israeli prisoners for leverage in negotiations, so maybe. A point about the situation in Israel in the past few years which I want to make is related to, uh, and those who follow me know, that there's a general sense of insecurity in Israel, there's political and social instability and unrest, public funds are being misused on agendas such as COVID, climate, judicial reform, abolishing cash, and many more. The current government is highly corrupt in my view, while the previous one was no better. I don't care about having a popular opinion, I care about exposing evil forces wherever and whomever they are. So to me, this surprise attack seems like a planned operation on all fronts. This is a failure to protect the people of Israel, for sure. Perhaps the biggest failure since the Yom Kippur War exactly 50 years ago, if not bigger. By the way, is it a coincidence it's exactly 50 years ago, almost on the day? The Yom Kippur War was on October 6th, 1973. If I was a conspiracy theorist, I would say that this feels like the war of the deep state. It feels like the people of Israel and the people of Palestine have been sold once again to the higher 